Hey, what's going on YouTube? Alabama Reloader here. So coming to you today, what in the world? I got a new phone, so I don't know. We'll see how this thing works as far as filming goes. This is the first video I've filmed with this phone. I had to go get a new one uh, on my other phone. I started randomly getting messages saying that uh, no SIM available, and apparently my SIM card reader went out just randomly. So I ended up getting a new phone. But so today's video, we're gonna be working with this bad boy right here. So if you guys have been paying attention to the community tab of my channel, where you go and you can make posts and all that, uh, I've been posting some pictures about the seven rim mag. That's what this is. This is a seven, rim, seven millimeter Remington Magnum. It is a Remington 770. So go look that up. It's about the most budget version of a Remington rifle that you could possibly buy. I don't even think they make these anymore. Uh, but when you do a little bit of searching online, you can see where they used to sell these things for like with a scope It was like 225 bucks or something. I mean it, 250. It, it was dirt cheap right around So that, that's the price point you're talking about two to three hundred bucks with a scope You could probably find it cheaper without who knows when they ran on sale, but this is a very cheap gun cheaply made um, This trigger guard here Look <laughs> Now, you know, my Kimber and my Kimber and my Tika both have plastic trigger guards, but this one, if you see it in person, then you'll understand what I'm talking about. This just, man, it looks and feels extremely cheap. Now, the one thing I will mention that even though this rifle is extremely cheap and budget oriented, it's probably got one of the best stocks of any budget, you know, budget, really cheap rifle I've ever owned or ever felt like the Ruger American and you guys know what I'm talking about if you own one of those they are garbage in terms of their stock it's just there's so much flex in it this thing now the barrel is not free floated so that is something that I'm gonna end up doing but it is not free floated so I will take the stock off and and do that I did have this apart to adjust the trigger the triggers are adjustable on these you have to be very careful though when you make adjustments there's two screws uh, on the trigger assembly itself one of them will actually jack up the engagement of your safety you don't want to mess with that one the other one is the one that will adjust the trigger pull weight so I, I adjusted that down I'm not gonna do a video on that but I adjusted it down because uh, out of the box this thing was pulling five pounds consistently five pound trigger pull which is just horrible uh, if you're used to that that's fine but once you get into the world of adjustable triggers and you start to adjust them down pound and a half two pounds somewhere in that range less than three it just it makes shooting especially at the bench so much easier um, and the same thing for hunting purposes I, I like to have a lighter trigger pull for hunting purposes but so that's what we're going to be shooting uh, the rifle the scope now this is more of a budget oriented setup this is a center point three to twelve by forty four bought this at Walmart Right? And if you go on their website, they have them for like less than a hundred bucks, I think. However, when I bought this, I actually bought two of them because they were running essentially a buy one, get one. They, it was $90 for two of these. They were 45 bucks a piece. They had them on clearance. Uh, it's just a three to 12 by 44, real cheap scope. Uh, it's got the ability to lock the turrets with this little, you know, weird locking mechanism to keep you from bumping them which is nice this is actually the scope that was on the 223 that i have the savage 110 hog hunter where my buddy zach took his son and he his son was able to kill his first deer ever this was the scope that was actually on that i just want to see if it'll hold up to the seven rim mag uh the recoil and all that just see how it works we might just break it and shooting this thing uh the scope rings these are utg quick disconnect mount uh little rings and same same deal i just want to see if they'll actually hold up to seven rim mag recoil uh, so this is more just an experimental setup to begin with. If I plan on keeping this rifle long term, I will uh, take these off, put something else on there, put a better scope on there. And all that. As you can tell, again, it's windy. It always is out here uh, at Hobbs Island Shooting Range, by the way. And if you do plan on becoming a member here, so this is what's great about it. It's Saturday. No one's here. They do have something going on over on the pistol side of the house. They've got like a steel park kind of set up right over the berm over there um, where you can do a lot of carbine and, and pistol stuff. But 10.30, 
and there's literally no one here. So that's what I like about this range is most of the time it's, it's not crowded at all. But if you do join, it did rain a ton last night and man, it is nasty out there. Okay, a lot of that Alabama clay. And so one range pro tip, always bring boots, just leave them in your vehicle. If you're gonna join out here, you're gonna need them at some point in time, trust me. So I've had several people walk over and say man that's a great idea i should i should throw a pair in my vehicle just to keep them yes you should so all right well, that's really it uh we are going to i don't have my reloading stuff yet for this uh, for seven rim mag so i ended up going to mr big guns over in huntsville who by the way they're sponsoring this video they just don't know it thank you matt um no i'm kidding he uh, he doesn't sponsor any of my videos but that is my number one recommendation for places to go shop he has, he has Varget on the shelf, reloaders. If you guys are looking for Varget, you can't find it anywhere. If you're local, he's got it on the shelf. So, and like multiple pounds of it. And then on top of that, he's got uh, Winchester Stayball 6.5. Again, probably probably 15 pounds of it just sitting on the shelf. Um, he's, his powder selection is really good right now. And then on top of that, he just told me I was in there yesterday. He said, hey, by the way, just got invoiced for another like nine or $10,000 worth of powder. And I was like, oh great, so a few pounds, you know, just kind of joking. But what's, what's awesome is he said he went and looked at the order and it's not necessarily, it's not just a restock of what he already has. He said the vast majority of it is powder that he doesn't have on the shelf now. So that's awesome. That's great that it's, it's the powder situation is improving a lot. So, but while I was in there, since I don't, I do have some Peterson brass on order for this guy. So we'll be uh, using Peterson brass and then uh, just got to get a full length resizing die because I already have a seven millimeter bullet seating die that we'll use. So today, this was just some of the, the factory stuff he had sitting on the shelf. So I went ahead and picked it up. 175 grain jacket and soft point. This is their federal power shock. So obviously intended for big boy stuff like you're gonna go kill an elk uh, this is what you'll want to take so yeah what i'm gonna do maybe so i just bore sided this guy but i did it at 100 yards so hopefully we're on the target fairly close uh, my plan is to set up this little guy over on the spotting scope and then just turn the camera on and let you guys see how this factory ammo shoots as I'm shooting it. So, see this new phone, I gotta get used to it. Seven room mag, there we go. 175 grain jacket at some point. Oh man, for comparison, this is it next to the seven wind short mag. I did post this picture over on the community tab. I'm not really gonna be doing a comparison of these today. Uh, because this is a 160 grain bullet, this is 175. What I'd like to do, once I get all my reloading stuff in and, and situated, then I'll probably do more of like comparison type videos where I'm shooting the exact same bullet, you know, same powder, and just see, you know, see what we see, right, essentially. So, uh, but yeah, you can definitely see a noticeable difference there. But, all right, that's it. Let's, uh, yeah. Let's get you guys switched over to the spotting scope and let's get some shooting going. All right, y'all hang tight. Okay, so due to technical difficulties because that, that thing is being extremely fiddly and I just can't, with this new phone, the cameras are supposed to be so much better and so much more improved and it, the thing is so sensitive. I mean, I can't, I just make one little tweak and I try to zoom in and it throws everything off. And so, yeah, you guys are just gonna get to watch me shoot from the bench. So there you go. And then we'll uh, head down there and see how it does. But again, I'm just testing out this factory ammo. So I'm, I don't really care about performance because I'm going to be hand loading for this thing anyway. Uh, but hopefully it doesn't shoot like garbage. Let's see.
Ugh, that just feels nasty. So yeah, you can hear World War III going on over there. But uh, no, I just got done shooting my Tika chambered in 270 Winchester and that Tika bolt, if you own one, you know what I'm talking about. So to go from that to this, God, this bolt, man, the feel is just, it's not good. I'm way low into the right, so I just need to make a few adjustments and then fire some more. So let me see if I can get her on paper and then uh, yeah. see how it does. All right, so range session is done. Um, I know I mentioned some more shooting footage, but I was I was having some issues running this bolt. This thing is just not. It, it's yeah, it's pretty bad. It feels exactly like the cost of the rifle cheap um and yeah it's having some issues with extraction i don't know if the, the rounds are just getting hung up on the next one below it i don't know if the belt has something to do with that uh, because this is the first belted magnum i've ever owned and or well not necessarily shot i i sighted in my uncle's uh, seven rim mag back before the season but his was a semi-auto it's a Browning BAR Safari, so so pretty, you know, completely different there in terms of the the action and everything. So, but just trying to extract around, it, it seemed like I was kind of getting hung up. So running the bolt was just not a smooth operation at all. Um, and so I will I will say though that this stuff we're about to walk down and take a look at the target. I'm gonna be honest, I was actually shocked at how well this thing plus this stuff performed so because again not a free floated barrel okay not even remotely close it's the stock touches the barrel makes contact all the way down the barrel um yeah so stock is not free floated the trigger adjustment i made that made a massive difference in terms of just the shootability uh in my opinion just because going from roughly a five pound trigger pull weight down to one and a half pounds is what I have it set at right now. That makes a huge difference shooting off of a bench. So, but yeah, oh, uh, I did check velocity on this stuff. Where's that? Here we go. And the back of the box says our muzzle 2860. Um, I, I shot five because, so what I did, I did a bore sight. I shot a couple rounds, saw where I was at, made a scope adjustment i shot an eight shot group so that took care of the first 10 then the second 10 i shot five for velocity and then i shot a five shot group to end the day so our velocity here's our numbers our average is 2846 so the box has 2860 we're very close to that uh, and i actually don't know how many rounds this rifle has had down it uh, down the tube so this thing could be pretty much new and over time you know that barrel is going to speed up uh, and then it'll kind of plateau out so so yeah it could still be speeding up so we we're basically right there on the uh on what federal said we should be hitting real close so 2860 we were at 2846 all right let's walk down again still no one's here not even on the pistol side now, I've been out here now for well, going on a couple hours and haven't had the first vehicle pull up on either side of me. So, but yeah, like this is what I'm talking about, right? Like that's what you're dealing with when you're coming out here. Kind of that Alabama clay. So, after it rains for a few days, you're going to need some boots. And it is extremely warm today. Big difference in temperature than what we've been dealing with here lately. We've had some uh, 
like I was saying, I think on one of the other uh, recent videos I posted, you know, old man winter is just fighting it tooth and nail. I mean, we were having, we had lows down in the, it was like down in the 20s just last week or just this past week. So now it's, today it's 80 degrees and looking wonderful. So these up here, this is, this is seven wisdom stuff. So we're not really worried about that. Um, but uh, to to start with, this is just some other garbage over here. That doesn't really matter either. But when I bore sided, I shot here, so I was low to the left. Made a scope adjustment the wrong way on my windage. I did come up. Um, I came up almost the right amount because then that was going to be my point of aim. Um, And so came up, but I went the wrong way. So then I had to uh, correct after my second shot. I was like, oh, need to go right. So I did, then I shot eight. So that's an eight shot group. And these are, I think three quarter inch dots, I believe, or half inch dots. I can't remember now. I think three quarter, but for factory ammunition, I mean, you know, probably two inches, some somewhere in there, you know, two inches or less. I'm thinking uh, on that group, which again for factor ammunition and you know me, I, I was halfway holding half, you know, somewhat decent. Um, again, with that center point scope, not necessarily the best thing in the world, but eight shots that'll kill anything uh, at any distance I'm gonna shoot at that's for sure then the five shot group was here it had some vertical stuff going on not you know 100% sure what's going on with that but it didn't the last five that I shot did not look as good as the first uh, eight in terms of when I grouped them so there you go factory ammunition but still not terrible in my opinion so and that stuff's not, it's not terribly expensive. I think it still ended up being like 40 bucks for that box, $2 a round. That's not cheap, um, but it's not terrible either. And then you feed it through something like a Remington 770 and it shoots like that, then not too shabby. So this is what I'm talking about. Um, so my expectations are somewhat high for this setup, believe it or not. Um, if it shoots somewhat decently like this i think we can find more accuracy so all right that's it that's where we're gonna leave it guys y'all have a good one and we'll catch y'all next time yeah look at all this yeah terrible all right i gotta get loaded up i'm getting out of here so y'all have a good one we'll see you later